And now I think what we'll do, we'll go into the weekly votes of the week. So as you know on the channel, um, we do a review of the round basically where we go through like the votes for every single game of like 3-2-1 basically um, of the best players in the game. Now this is not just a midfielder's award like you'd see at the Brownlow. Like I think every couple of weeks we usually give a defender a one vote or two vote. Like last week I think we gave Harry Cunningham one vote. Uh, for the Swans over um, Brisbane because he kept Charlie Cameron to uh, seven disposals, no goals. Um, we've given Jackson Payne uh, for Brisbane a vote in the past, I know, um, and many others as well, just off, you know, having a little bit more influence on the game and playing, like, well for your team. So that's why you pro a lot of them may not be the Brownlow medal votes, but it's more important because I made them. <laughs> but nonetheless, we get to the first game of round 15, which was Geelong versus Melbourne. Um, this was a good game from Geelong. Now, they didn't start off the best, and to be honest, it was a pretty big arm wrestle until about three-quarter time. Obviously, um, Gary Rowan not accidentally knocked out his teammate, and Jeremy Cameron, and it's great to see that he's okay at the moment. He'll miss the game against the Swans this week, but he should be back for the week after, so that's really good. And um, speaking of Gary Rowan, he was big in this game. So, um, he was really, really good, and I was... Um, Really impressed, because you know how Gary Rowan can be. Um, he's definitely one of the lowest disposal getters on the ground, but he can have a, he's probably the best player on the t in, a, in a game that has the lowest amount of disposals. It shows that really a lot of players who don't have many disposals in games can still have a massive impact, and he's that in spades. So the 3-2-1 votes for this one, I gave the three votes to Gary Rowan, the two votes to Mitch Duncan, and the one vote to Tom Atkins. Now, the reason why I gave the one vote to Tom Atkins, and my brother, uh, Jackpot Junkies, was watching this game as well, and he agreed with me, that Tom Atkins, in the three of the four quarters that he played on Christian Petrarca, I know Christian Petrarca had the most disposals on the ground and had the most fantasy points, but he was well held, especially in clearance, by Tom Atkins. He could not get um, any real um, effective disposal out of the clearance as Christian Petrarca, and Atkins played a massive game. Um, I think that he's actually the future of the um, Geelong midfield, along with like Tanner Bruin, who we saw in that game, is really good as well, and uh, Max Holmes. I think that Atkins needs to lead this team in the midfield. He was big in this game. He's one of the best defensive runners now, like, you know, with Tuke Miller and um, uh, the likes like that. He is a really good defensive runner as a midfielder, and I think it's very underrated. So I gave him, we gave him the one vote. Um, after that, we get to St Kilda Brisbane. St Kilda, I need. I, I, it's very disappointing that they didn't win this game. I know Brisbane have a pretty okay record at Marvel, but away from home, they aren't the best. And this is a real chance for St Kilda to solidify their spot in the top eight. And now they're now they're really in in touch with that middle range of the ladder. Now they do have a win in hand, I believe. I think they're thirty six points on the ladder, so they're not right there yet. But if they lose a couple of games in a row, they're in threat of losing the a top eight spot. But all credit to Brisbane, they were massive in this game. And the three votes, I gave the three votes to Harris Andrews, two votes to Jack Sinclair, and the one vote to Jackson Payne. Now, Harris Andrews is massive, especially in the first half for Brisbane, playing as the intercept defender. And um, he was really, really good. And I think he's going to play that position a lot more now because of the one vote play that I gave was Jackson Payne. Because this guy is one of the best defenders in the comp at the moment. One of the best lockdown defenders. Um, he kept Max King to no goals, no marks. That was just amazing from Jackson Payne. Um, to keep one of the... Well, probably one of the more informed forwards this you know, month or so, he kept into no goals and no marks. That is a, a, a wonderful game from him. And it also just makes Brisbane's defence look a lot better because Harris Andrews doesn't have to play on the most um, influential forward anymore. He can play as that intercept player, which Jake Lieber can do for Melbourne or Aliri Al Al is good at for the Port Adelaide. So that's a really big plus for Brisbane. It gives them a chance now that they can actually push for, you know, that top four spot and possibly top two, although I think it may be a little bit out of reach for them now. But they're going to be very hard to beat at the Gabba if they can be beaten at all. They're just going to have problems away from home. And if Jack Payne can take that spot and take it in spades, which he shows that he can, I think Brisbane are a real chance later on in the season. After that, we get to Sydney versus West Coast. Look, I'm not going to spend much time on this one because we did talk about it at the start of the uh, podcast. But Sydney, look, they had 50 scoring shots. <laughs> They took the kill that was there, and they took it in spades. I have to give Sydney a little bit of credit, because we've seen teams like play games against maybe the West Coast, or even Port Adelaide maybe was probably a good example earlier in the year against Hawthorne, when they should have taken the advantage and drilled home a massive win and get percentage, and Sydney did that. But West Coast gave no fight whatsoever. 
But nonetheless, the three votes, three votes I gave to Isaac Heaney, two votes to Errol Goulden, and the one vote to Chad Warner. Isaac Heaney was massive in this game. He kicked five goals, three. He had 18 score involvements, and this may be something that can kickstart his season. We know his season has been a bit poor so far this year. He definitely hasn't met the heights that he had 12 months ago. But finally, he had a good game of footy, and yeah, I think Isaac Heaney was the best player on the ground. But I do believe at the end of the game, they gave away a medal. I stopped watching at this point. I don't know who else could have watched it. But Errol Gordon did get the player of the match. I think Errol Gordon was very, very good. I just thought that Heaney was a little bit better. And Chad Warner was pretty much as good as he has been all season. I think he's been probably one of Sydney's best. I do think that he needs to find that form of, find that consistency. Because I think sometimes when he's not playing well, he plays really poorly. And when he plays really, really, when when he gets that form, he's one of the best in the comp. So if he can find that middle ground, I think he'll find that in the next few years. I think he can be one of the top midfielders in the game. Next up, we get to Fremantle versus Essendon. And Fremantle, after a really poor game against the Giants, they came out at home and they beat Essendon. And I do think that this was kind of coming for Essendon. They're not very good over in Perth. In fact, the game they've played against West Coast this year, when they won by 50 points, is one of their best wins ever in Perth. So they're not very good over there. And in the first quarter, though, it looked like Essendon really had the game going their way. But then they just fell away and went, and Fremantle just lifted to another gear. And um, led by, in the middle, Brayshaw, Sarong, and even Fife went through there a lot of the night. You know, they look, they're definitely building something there. And I don't know if they, maybe they were a year too early last year or a couple of years too early because I don't know if they'll make the eight this year now because they're a little, they've been a little bit consistent in 2020, inconsistent in 2023. But I do think that they could um, make a bit of a run towards finals. And if they can win those games at home and then pinch a couple of games away, I do think that they have a chance, Fremantle. But nonetheless, the three votes I gave to Liam Ryan, he was massive in this game with, uh, I think, 16 or 17 marks. We had um, Andrew Brayshaw with the two votes and Luke Jackson with the one vote. So it's really hard to say um, if Fremantle are going to play Luke Jackson forward. He was very good in this game. He kicked three goals. He was good in the ruck when he went in there. So it's really hard to know if Fremantle can make him the forward that they want him to be as that like secondary ruck. I don't know if it's going to be the case because we saw Sean Darcy when he was out um, for the few weeks that he was. Luke Jackson was really good in the in the um, ruck with for Fremantle. But yeah, Luke Jackson did prove that he can play forward and he got three goals. He was big. And Caleb Sarong was very close to getting a vote here. Uh, but I did give it to Andrew Brasher as the two votes because he was just very good in the midfield for Fremantle. And I just saw him as their best midfielder. After that, we get to the game of the round, which was uh, Collingwood versus Adelaide. Collingwood, really good in the first half. The Crows came right back in the third quarter to take the lead. And it almost looked like Collingwood may be up for a bit of a challenge here. They may be coming off a little bit sluggish off the bye. But Collingwood, once again, as they have shown for at least the last year and a half, that they can just claw back any margin and claw back any team. And um, led by basically Nick Dacos again, uh, he got them home. And um, I am a little bit disappointed about the Crows because they kicked eight goals in a row, had a pretty good lead. And to be fair, they only had a good quarter in the third quarter. They weren't that good for the rest of the game. So I think the Crows need to find some consistency especially in games away from home, because we've seen this year that they're, they have, I don't think, have they even lost, I don't even know if they've lost a game at home this year, but they're not very good away. So they have to be careful of losing those games away from home. Um, and the 3-2-1 votes, three votes went to Jordan Dawson, two votes to Nick Dacos, and the one vote to Taylor Walker. Jordan Dawson was massive in this game. 10 plus tackles, 30 plus disposals. It's a little bit disappointing because it's one supporter seeing it, but it's also very good to see. And it also proves maybe a good decision for, for Matthew Nix to pick him as the captain at the start of the year. He's leading from the front, and we've seen a lot of players in their careers when they get picked as captain. Um, they just can't find that form when they take that big responsibility. But Jordan Dawson's taking it in spades, and he was massive in this game. Almost got his team over the line, and it was just... If it wasn't for the guy with two votes, Nick Dacos, he may well have got it. But... Um, Nick Dacos was massive again and uh, kicked a goal or two as well, playing really good in the midfield at the moment, Dacos. And I don't think I've seen any 19-year-old play as well as he has. He's in insane form and he's arguably holding... He's ne- I, I, I've been looking at the votes and I've been tallying them up. I can't remember. I don't think he's in front, but he's definitely up there for Collingwood. And the one vote I get to Taylor Walker, he got five goals in this game. And now he's leading the Coleman, which is really surprising as we saw at the start of the year. 
Charlie Curno and Jeremy Cameron were fighting it out, and everyone was saying, can they get to 100? And all of a sudden now, they've really petered out, and Taylor Walker's now got the Coleman medal almost at his grasp. They've got a couple of games for the rest of the season. They've also got West Coast again. They've got North Melbourne this week. He could get a couple of bags, Taylor Walker, and take the Coleman for himself. And it would be amazing for a player at age 32, 33 plus for him to get the Coleman and really put a dampener on the... I think it would put a, send a bit of a shock through the AFL as the tall forward brigade. Because if he's at 34 or 35 getting the Coleman medal, I think it's a bit of a slap in the face to the rest of those big tall forwards. I do think that Oscar Allen and Nick Larky are a little bit unlucky that they're playing for teams that aren't scoring as much because those two are in the top 10 right now. I think they're in nearly top five. And yeah, I think they actually would be giving it a real shake if they could just actually perform a little bit better as a team. But yeah, at the moment, Taylor Walker leading the Coleman, which I don't think I don't think anyone expected at the start of the year. And finally, we get to the Gold Coast versus Hawthorne. And Gold Coast had 31 scoring shots in this game. At home, needed to respond after a really poor game last week uh, against Carlton. They did that in spades. It's great to see. Hawthorne, I don't think they're ever going to win this game, especially with the loss of Josh uh, James Sicily, their captain, for uh, three, two or three weeks from now. So they were never going to hold up in defence, and I think it showed. Uh, the 3-2-1 three vo- three, votes, I gave Noah Anderson the three votes, Braden Fiorini with the two, and the one vote to Blake Hardwick. Noah Anderson... He's been a little bit inconsistent at times this year. I don't think he's been as good as he was last year, to be fair. But I do think now he he is also holding the responsibility because Toot Miller's not there. And a lot of games this year, he has been well helped by Matt Rao. But today he took it... it well, sorry, not today. Uh, yesterday, he really took it on as the role as I need to take control here. We didn't play well last week as a senior player, really, of the club. And one of the best midfielders in the comp that I've got to take responsibility. And he did that really well, Noah Anderson. Uh, Braden Fiorini. Have played really well off the wing for um, the Gold Coast. And this guy has probably been known as like a real disposal getter. I know a lot of AFL fantasy players like him because he does get those disposals. But he's always been in and out of the team, probably for his defensive attributes. But as a wingman, he played really well in this game for the Gold Coast. And if he can hold that sort of form, he could definitely push this team a little bit higher up, I believe. I think a wingman... I think the wingman is probably one of the most underrated positions in the game now. As we've seen, like Nick Martin with Essendon and Lockie Hunter and Langdon with Melbourne, the wingman can be one of the best attributes for a team. And if you have a good wingman, you can have a really good setup for your your transition of football. So I think that if Braden Fiorini can lock down that role, the Gold Coast could definitely find some better avenues towards goal. And the one vote I gave to Blake Hardwick, who was very good for Wet Hawthorne playing off halfback. I don't know why they played him forward. Well, not hard. Well, yeah, well, not. I don't know why they played him forward. He had a massive game with, I think, 35-plus touches. And, yeah, he was just very good for Hawthorne. I, I don't think they need to chuck him forward ever again. I don't think that's the option for him. I don't think he could play that role. But there we go, guys. That is the review for Round 15 and the votes. Uh, what we will be doing at the end of the year, we'll be doing, like, a votes tally. Like, you know, obviously how the brown load is called, but um, a little bit more interesting because I'm not reading him like a, a patient who wears a helmet and draws into a cup like... I don't know why they read it like that. But yeah, we'll be doing a votes and we'll see who can win the the Riders medal, which is obviously way more important than the brown line.